How did Lord of the Rings games go from this to this? Everyone and their mums from Bag End to the town of Bree knows Gollum was a stinker. But what if I told you a new Lord of the Rings game with John Rhys Davis reprising his role as Ghibli released last year? <laughs> Even if you're a rabid Tolkien fan, Return to Moria may have slipped past you undetected. Despite mixed reviews, I've been immersing myself in the game, but there's something about it that left me feeling sad. We're in an age where Elden Ring and Baldur's Gate can snag a game of the year, yet the undisputed daddy of the fantasy genre seems to have faded from memory. And I wanted to know why, so I did a deep dive on the internet to see what I could find. Darkness took me, but now I've returned to you at the turn of the tide. Precursor the Brown, they call me, and you might just tarnish your breeches as well when you see what I've discovered. I was fortunate to grow up in a golden age where consistently great Lord of the Rings games based off of PJ's film trilogy were released. 2002 from 2006 was an all-you-can-eat buffet suitable for every appetite. I know of your past fondness for the Final Fantasy series, but I can wholeheartedly recommend the Third Age for turn-based RPG combat. Perhaps something robust, precise, two movie tie-ins with a reliable hack and slash formula. Battle for Middle Earth was a little rough around the edges for my tech. But when EA released the sequel, the RTS formula really came into its own. But I think their undisputed masterpiece was the expansion Rise of the Witch King. I'm all over the place with my references. Like a fat kid in a sweet shop, I gorged myself on anything Lord of the Rings themed I could get my hands on. One more. I even had tactics on the PSP. The hype of the films created a gaming juggernaut that continued to pump out titles. Online, Conquest, War in the North, Guardians, the Lego games, some of which were objectively average. Nevertheless, they were a hit with fans. I sunk an unimaginable amount of time into Conquest because it's the video game equivalent of a child smashing his action figures together. And publishers including EA and Warner Brothers capitalized on the success of the films by using the cast in marketing campaigns for the movie tie-ins. And you'll go, Billy, press X, and he'll be like, hang on a minute, hey, wait, where's, which one's X? This actually persisted up until 2011 with Sean Austin and Dominic Monoghan joining other celebrities to promote War in the North. I'm like the guy that just wants to carry a big hammer and hit things with it, so uh, of course I would play the dwarf. The cast still puts so much back into the community, and I want you to remember the significance of this. We're going to circle back around to it later. Just when you thought the IP had been milked dry, Monolith dropped what can only be described as Shadow the Hedgehog to Lord of the Rings Sonic. Shadow of Mordor was made for all the kids that had grown up in the early 2000s. It provided a bleak and violent contrast to previous titles. Titles. And with a mechanic as innovative as the Nemesis system, it rightfully blew up. I'll take your head and parade it around on a spear, man filth. And what happened after this? A great sequel that buried itself in the public eye because of unnecessary microtransactions. And then, nothing. And for six long years, we had no Lord of the Rings games. No, I do not count mobile releases. Rumor grew of a shadow in Central Europe, whispers of a new title. Daedalac Entertainment perceived its time had come. We all know how that story goes. <laughs> And surprisingly, only five months later, Return to Moria dropped to an absolute deafening silence. A survival crafting game set in Middle-earth should have been a massive success. Exploring Moria in the Fourth Age is enough to get Tolkien fans salivating. Look, more lumps, There is a healthy amount of jank, especially with the combat, but there is a certain charm that comes with these titles. And if you're big into base building games, it's worth a look. I'm still emotionally scarred from delving too greedily and triggering a horde for the first time. Oh, they're fucking coming. They're coming out the floor over there. Oh my God. Oh my freaking God. There's like 20 of them. Despite the average reception, the game has found a niche, but it didn't really do anything to push Lord of the Rings back into a prominent position in the gaming community. Which begs the question, has the hype surrounding Peter Jackson's trilogy diminished? The problem may lie with the copyright holder. Warner Brothers sold the rights to a Swedish company called Embracer Group in 2022, giving them dominion over all films, games and merchandise, like Top Trumps. 
there's something that always bothered me in, in this pack. I can find Sauron. There we go. So we have Sauron. Okay, and then we want to find Durin's Bane. Where's Bane? Where's Bane? So for those of you that know your Valar from your Maya, you'll know that the Balrog and the Sauron are both Maya. So technically they should really be the same age because they probably came into being at the same time of creation. But for some bizarre reason, Sauron is written as being 27,061 years old. Whereas Big Bad Balrog is written as being 13,905. Maybe it's counting from when they both came into Middle Earth, but both of these guys would have existed before the trees and before sort of creation came into being. Uh, I'm going to have to write to the bloody Tolkien estate and ask them what the hell's going on. If you're not familiar with Embracer Group, let's just say they aren't very popular, to the point that they were even openly mocked at the Game Awards. There are two phrases everyone in this room, everyone in video games never wants to hear. And number one is, people online are mad. And number two is, the Embracer Group is here. They're rapidly becoming the most hated video game company, for good reason. The CEO is trying to give Sauron a run for his money as Dark Lord. When he was talking about laying off 1400 employees, Lars Winchor said, layoffs are something everyone needs to get through. Further saying the reduction in workforce was due to overinvestment in previous years. But yeah, at least Sauron provided the orcs with industry and food. This is basically corporate waffle for we got greedy, shelling out almost 400 100 million on an IP and we don't know what to do with it. Not to mention it's such a disgustingly out of touch thing to say when talking about people's livelihoods, as if the layoffs will even affect him. And this attitude continues as when talking about acquiring the Lord of the Rings IP, the company was quoted saying, we know we need to be exploiting Lord of the Rings in a very different fashion. Compare this to how Michael DePlatte talks about the IP. He worked on War in the North and later as creative director for Shadow of Mordor. Went back to the books, which, uh, you know, obviously was something I'd done pretty regularly, kind of since I was five anyway. So I think in particular went back to the, to the specific moments in the films and the books that were the kind of key inspirations for um, the story that we wanted to tell as well. It's clear Embracer has little passion for Lord of the Rings, seeing the IP as a cash cow to be milked dry. Now, I can appreciate I'm comparing a CEO with a creative, but you can release a game with soul and still make money. That makes sense from a business standpoint, with the only other known title in the pipeline appearing to be an Animal Crossing style game set in the Shire, there's a bit of a pattern emerging. Embracer seems to be focused on giving the license to indie developers that don't have the budget to do the IP justice. Let me explain. The film set a high bar and proved Lord of the Rings demands a certain scale. And that's not to say the Moria devs have done a bad job within their budgetary constraints. Or there isn't a place for smaller focused games like Tales from the Shire. From the Shire? I'm from the Shire, Mr. Frodo. Potatoes. But I think these indie titles should be a side dish to larger AAA experiences, especially in a gaming land landscape where fantasy titles have taken centre stage. Simply bearing the Lord of the Rings name isn't enough anymore. Moria had the right idea. Survival games are massively popular, however it was dead on arrival, largely because it was an Epic Game Store exclusive. At the time of making this video, it was 56 on Epic Game Store's most played page. <laughs> There's a Reddit post titled, Remember Return to Moria. The game's not even six months old, but I also think the marketing needs to share the load as well. I find it maddening there was no official promo of John Rhys Davis talking about reprising his role after 20 years. I mean, maybe it was due to the writer's strike. We have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. But he's obviously still very passionate about the character. Nerd of the Rings did an interview with John about the game where he slips into character regularly and it's absolutely fantastic. We dwarves are active creatures, active in the mind as well as in the mind. I really think he should have been at the centre of the game's marketing campaign. And you couldn't convince me that the cast are now irrelevant, because Larian Studios did a better job capitalising on Lord of the Rings actors with Baldur's Gate. It's not like they need to be directly involved with the game. All I saw for Jedi Survivor were the Mark Hamill promos. However, I don't think it would be a reach to say Embracer doesn't give these titles a fair chance. We don't know what kind of budgetary restrictions or deadlines have been imposed on the developers. And despite shelling out 300 
95 million for the rights, Embracer seems set on squandering the potential of the IP. <laughs> However, the current state of Lord of the Rings in other media isn't exactly encouraging for game studios. The overwhelmingly negative reception the Rings of Power received is likely to have the opposite effect the trilogy did, but successful adaption without religiously following the source material is possible. Shadow of Mordor's story is fan fiction as far as Tolkien canon is concerned, but it still follows Tolkien's theme, so you're willing to overlook a little bit of lore meddling. I am the true Lord of the Rings! It's unlikely there will be a resurgence to the degree of the early 2000s, but I hope Gollum was just an anomaly and Return to Moria quietly gets the ball rolling for future titles. It is a fun game that I could see growing with future updates, just get it off Epic Game Store. What's your favourite Lord of the Rings game and why? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you on the next one.